Okay. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Hello. We will um, begin with opening statements. Uh, first, we will have Mary Foremaster and then Stephanie Hill. Uh, Can you hear me? Hello. Okay. Hi, I'm Mary Foremaster, and I am from Cedar City. I'm a Southern Utah girl, St. George and Cedar City. Um, I worked at in the uh, for the business sector. I was in corporate boardrooms, so I have a lot of experience when it comes to managing employees and looking at budgets and setting goals and um, just all the administrative stuff you do in the boardroom. But my passion has always been in education, and I came here to SUU for uh, my elementary ed and secondary ed, and I worked for Iron County School District and worked at Cedar High School. And so I have the experience. I think what sets me apart from my opponents is that I have two children who are in the school districts right now, and I want to do everything I can to help our kids succeed and do well. And I know that it's a new generation. My two girls are kindergarten and seventh grade, and there's already a huge generation gap between the two of them. And I know there's things we need to change in schools. So that's Thank you. That's Ms. Thank Hill. You. Hi, thank you. Uh, thanks to the Levitt Center for hosting. Thank you for attending. I'm Stephanie Hill. I was born in Cedar City. I grew up in Vegas. I graduated from SUU. I have 30 years of experience in the secondary classroom, mostly English and, English and Spanish. I'm a Fulbright grantee, having taught middle school in rural northern Mexico. I have a master's degree in Spanish from UC Santa Barbara. I have a leadership endorsement from SUU. I um, am intimately connected with special education. I fought at the legislature advocating for the most vulnerable in our society. I, um, I have a son with a disability who is currently attending. I, um, I have a great passion for education. I have a great passion for literacy. Above all, um, I am gravely concerned that only 37% of our fourth graders read. I can help solve that with your vote. Thank you. All right, thank you. We're going to jump in with a question submitted to us via Facebook. School safety continues to be a major issue in our country. What is your plan to address school safety if elected? Um, Ms. Hill, you're... Response. Beautiful, thank you. Um, I've taught in an urban area. In fact, um, on two different occasions, there were murders in front of my school. We had a, an, a, an incredibly well-articulated safety program. There was a single point of entry. Outside doors were locked. We had campus police who were armed. I am fully supportive of armed law enforcement within our schools. I had the great misfortune, even though I have my con concealed carry permit, of not being able to carry on the school. I would have been at the school. I would have been happy to do so. I am perfectly open to the idea of educators who would volunteer for them to be, um, for them to carry at school. There's absolutely nothing more critical than the safety of our children. Second only to literacy. Thank you. All right, thank you. Ms. Foremaster, your response? Thank you. This has obviously been on, my, on all our minds with what's been happening lately. I know our schools, have, we've been doing what we can to keep our kids safe, and we need to do more. We need to, I'm all about getting an officer in the school, and I think we already have that um, teachers, if they want to carry a gun, can right now, concealed carry. So that's the option there too. We um, need to look at the perimeters and, and make sure that the kids are safe and there's single entry and the, the two factor entrance. But I don't want our kids to go to school in a fortress either. And so that concerns me. And I think we all need to look in the mirror and, and say, what can I do to uh, help? or What can I sacrifice? What can I do to help this? epidemic in society and see if there's something we can do individually. Thank you. According to a 2021 teacher retention audit done by the state legislature, 43% of new teachers leave within the first five years of teaching. Utah also has one of the worst teacher turnover rates in the nation. 
What will you do to ensure that good teachers in Iron County are supported and retained? And that'll be Ms. Foremaster first. Thank you. I'm gonna just bring up the elephant in the room and that is politics. Politics unfortunately has taken over the boardrooms and I think here in Iron County it started with the Redmond thing and then nationally it, it was COVID and there's become this really scary um, movement happening with um, kind of almost extremist politicians that are inciting fear and I bought into it as a parent because we want to protect our kids for a while. But then when I turned off the noise and realized, you know, did some study on my own to see what really were the threats to our kids, I realized, you know, there might be some schools in the nation that have these problems, but not here in Iron County. And we need to really um, get politics out of the boardroom. We don't need it to be a, a dog fight. We need to work together as parents, as board members, as teachers. We need to support our teachers. They are um, right now, sorry, yeah, that's, that's what I think is the politics, so. Thank you, Ms. Hill? I would say that attrition is almost exclusively due to a poor curriculum and teachers having no control over their curriculum. More than 20 years ago, we had the federal government shove uh, No Child Left Behind Nickleby um, into every classroom. Um, about 10 years after that, we had the Common Core, which exclusively federalized it. We're getting tested on standardized testing when we don't have standardized teaching. Every classroom and every subject has a simple two-page document with these nebulous, nebulous standards that set everyone up in that building for failure. I would bring back a specific curriculum that we had for 100 years and tweak it with modern day issues. Attrition has almost exclusively to do with teachers having zero voice over their classrooms. We need to return teaching to the teachers away from the, away from the federal government. Uh, there, it would be an easy thing to do to make those state standards, which again are about two pages per, um, per grade, have those align with a specific curriculum. I would love to talk more about this, by the way. All right, thank you. Special education programs in Iron County are federally funded through IDEA, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. Do you think the funding for our special education programs is adequate? If not, what resources would you add? Ms. Hill, your response. Thank you. SPED. SPED is second only to literacy. My son is on an IEP. Uh, we, we have good money. This district has, uh, I think it's 8.6 million that we receive. We have between two and 2.5 million that we spend on untrained aids. I think we could probably train our aides and train, and train the teachers on how to utilize them. I have, in fact, spoken with the superintendent on various occasions about some inherent problems that I see specifically with supervision in the schools because I know that my son's IEP has been egregiously out of compliance, having been intimately involved uh, among, with parents uh, who have kids with IEPs. I see these problems. We don't need more money. We need better training. Ms. Foremaster. Thank you. I echo what Mrs. Hill says, and she, with her personal experience, would have a lot more knowledge in that. I support, um, I would advocate for, always for funding to get more professionals into the SPED program. I did some SPED here at SUU. I studied it. And so, yes, definitely, I'm, I'm an advocate for those that are in the margin. I want them to succeed. So I would always be behind whatever policy we need to do to improve education and equity for those kids who need it. Thank you. And just really quickly, I'm gonna uh, ask that we hold all applause until the end of each debate, thank you. Um, the Iron County School Board's current mission statement is, uh, the Iron County School District supports families in developing college and career readiness by building knowledge, skills, and relationships for all. Do you think we are living up to it? Ms. Foremaster. I think we could do better. Um, one thing that I'm really pushing for um, is helping our kids with the emotional side. We need to implement emotional learning in our classrooms. And I know that's very controversial, but our kids today, even though we're teaching these things at home, responsibility, civility, accountability, we and, and coping skills, we need to 
to supplement that in the classroom to help our kids succeed in life. If they're going to be able to uh, move forward and get jobs, sit down for an interview, and socialize with people, we need to help them in all areas, academics and socially and emotionally. So that's one thing I'm really pushing for because I want our kids to succeed. Thank you. Ms. Hill. Are we succeeding? No. 37% of our kids can't read in fourth grade. That's the benchmark. If a kid isn't reading in, in, by fourth grade, he is set on a trajectory to never read. Our federal prisons are populated with 75% illiterate inmates. That's not a correlation, that's a causation. As far as SEL is concerned, I would hotly disagree with a prescribed curriculum. We have character education that's written into statute. If we can get our kids to read, you tell me what happens in your homes when your kids come home having been incredibly successful. It changes the entire timbre of your home and a community. That's absolutely true within a school. I sat in on a school board meeting recently where not only did we not meet the goals, we fell from the initial benchmark. That is unacceptable. We have a contract with the community to teach our kids literacy. Thank you. All right, thank you. We'll head into closing statements. Um, Mary, your response, please. Okay. I'm grateful I had this opportunity. Thank you. Um, I, it's sad to, uh, to hear such an abysmal take on uh, Iron County School District because I, I know that we're doing good and we can do better. Our, our kids, I want them to thrive. And the literacy, uh, our schools, there's different campuses that are doing really well, actually. They're above the 37%. And so it, it's a matter of looking at exactly what is happening. And I don't want to micromanage our teachers. We have the best educators in Iron County, and I want to keep them. Back to that question about retention. I don't want them to quit like they are. I want people to want to be teachers again. And I want our teachers that are there to stay. I want to... I want Iron County to keep what we have and make it better. Thank you. Oh, I have a few more seconds. I'm Mary Foremaster, and I feel like I'm a reflection of this community because I am a mom, and I'm Hispanic, and I love Cedar. I've been here forever, so I want to re represent you. Thank you. All right, Stephanie. Thank you. I'm going to go back to literacy, and the bottom line is we've suffered from common core our teachers and our kids are not nearly as successful as they should be. I sub. I see how everybody is killing themselves, but I'm telling you right now the programs are inadequate, and we can fix that. We can reclaim local control. That's first and foremost. I would, in an effort to do that, I would reclaim a specific curriculum. Our teachers are held to a standard that that they can't meet. The kids are held to a standard that they can't meet. There's not standardized teaching. So how can they, how can they accomplish well on standardized testing? I have dedicated my whole life to making sure that kids are literate and that language is valued. That's where we need to start. I think if we can produce some success that, um, in fact, everything is going to fall into place much more easily. I'm Stephanie Hill. I solicit your vote. I thank you again for being here. All right, thank you. Let's give a round of applause for school board seat four candidates.